What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 12 in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that some polynomial has a lead coefficient of 1 and exactly three distinct zeros. Negative 1 is multiplicity 2, and then 2 and 4 are each multiplicity 1, and we're supposed to find p of s. Now this is going to test us on three skills. First, recognizing what multiplicity means when it talks about a zero. Second, the relationship between zeros and linear factors. And third, in the way that I'm solving this problem that I think is easiest, we will have to multiply two trinomials. So let's start by just looking at some of the wording of this. When I see lead coefficient of 1, that just means that whatever my zeros are, I'm not going to end up multiplying them by anything. Next, I see multiplicity, and that tells me that this 0 actually shows up twice. And this is when we get to the idea of linear factors. Because if a is a zero of a polynomial, then x minus a is a linear factor of that polynomial. And what multiplicity means in that context is that if I see x equals negative 1, I know that x plus 1 is going to be a linear factor. But because it has multiplicity 2, I'm going to multiply it by itself twice. And then I do... The same thing for x equals 2, I change it to x minus 2. And then x equals 4, I change that to x minus 4. So now, I have my three distinct zeros. Negative 1 with multiplicity 2 means that x plus 1 is a linear factor exactly twice. x equals 2 translates to x minus 2. x equals 4 translates to x minus 4. So now let's go ahead and multiply these pairs of binomials that I intentionally wrote in different colors. Because if I want to FOIL x plus 1 and x plus 1 for my first, my first terms, x and x give me x squared. For my outside, x and plus 1 give me plus x. For my inside, plus 1 and x give me plus x. My last terms, plus 1 times plus 1 gives me just plus 1, which leads me to... After combining my like terms, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, I need to do the same thing for these two binomials. So my first numbers, x times x, gives me x squared. My outside numbers, x times minus 4, gives me minus 4x. My inside numbers, minus 2 and x that becomes minus 2x. And for my last numbers, minus 2 and minus 4 give me plus 8. So after I combine my like terms, the other trinomial that I'm working with is x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now to multiply these trinomials, I'm actually going to break out something that you might or might not remember from earlier grades when you were learning about multiplication, and that is the box method. So essentially, I'm going to set up each of my trinomials in this way. And for each box, I'm going to multiply what's in the row by what's in the corresponding column. So as an example, x squared times x squared would give me x to the fourth. x squared times 2x gives me 2x cubed. And then x squared times negative 6x gives me negative 6x cubed. x squared times 1 just gives me 1x squared. Negative 6x times positive 2x gives me negative 12x squared. Uh, positive 8 times x squared gives me 8x squared. 8 times 2x gives me 16x. Negative 6x times 1 gives me negative 6x. And then 8 times 1 just gives me 8. And now, by combining like terms, I can actually use a bit of a shortcut and see that all my x cubeds, x squareds, and x's are along diagonals. So negative 6x cubed plus 2x cubed start with my x to the fourth, gives me minus 4x cubed. 1x squared plus 8x squared minus 12x squared gives me minus 
3x squared. Negative 6x plus 16x gives me plus 10x, and then 8 just becomes plus 8. So after all that, here is my polynomial. My lead coefficient is 1. This is 1x to the 4th. So I have the lead coefficient part down. I've done all that correctly. Now I just need to look for the answer choice that matches the work I've done, which is choice C. Now I will say that each of these other three answer choices can come by you making a certain kind of mistake. Choice D, you can get to by forgetting to flip the signs of these. So if you went ahead and did x minus 1 times x minus 1, times x plus 2 times x plus 4. That would get you choice D. And then choice A and B, you could get by either doing the um, multiplying correctly or incorrectly if you forgot to count that this was a zero of multiplicity 2. So if you did just x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 4, that would give you either A or B, I forget exactly which, and then forgetting to flip your signs and forgetting about the idea of multiplicity 2 would get you the other answer choice. So each of these answers you could get to by doing the problem almost right, but not quite. North Carolina loves putting these kind of trick answers in their questions, and I think it's, I personally think it's very mean, but that's what they do, so we gotta deal with it.